So the materials that we're going to be needing today to complete our ribbed beanie is a ball of Simply Chunky yarn. I'm using paint box yarns and this is the shade Pistachio, my absolute favourite. So in America it will be a bulky yarn, size 5, um, and this kind of gives you a warm hat, um, but we're going to be using an 8mm crochet hook. I'm going to link everything below for you so that you can find these products for you and where to get your paint box yarns as well. If you're new to the ribbing technique, I'd recommend using um, some stitch markers. I'll show you where to place them so that you can find the ends or where you need to place your last stitch. You are going to need a darning needle towards the end as well, as well as a pair of scissors, of which I can't find right now, but I'll get them ready for the end. So let's get started. We're going to be making an adult ribbed crochet beanie. So that's going to have a head circumference of 22 inches. If you're looking to make a different age or a different size, I'll pop a link below in the comment section, in the description section, sorry, where you can visit the blog post and find all the sizings and all the starting chains and the number of rows you'll need to do. So the written pattern effectively, um, so that you can complete any size of ribbed beanie as well. So that's from newborn all the way up to what I consider a large adult, someone that's blessed with a lot more hair than me. So we're going to start by creating our slip knot, I'll pop a link below on a simple way on how to create a slip knot if you're not sure of that already. Um, just attach that to your hook and tighten pulling the working yarn. So our starting chain for an adult ribbed hat is going to be 37. So that's one, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. Oh dear. 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37. So this is quite a long chain considering, but this is going to be the, the length of your hat. So from the crown plus a brim, if someone wants to wear it with a brim. So we're going to work into the second chain from the hook. So this loop on our hook doesn't count as anything. This is the first chain that would come undone if we worked into it. So we're going to work into this chain and we're only going to go through the top loop of our chain. Because we're going to work onto the other side when we sew it up at the end. So we're going to start by yarning over because we're doing a half treble crochet in the UK terms, a half double crochet in the US terms. So we simply yarn over the hook, insert our hook under that first top bit of the chain, yarn over, pull through to bring a loop up, then yarn over and pull through all three loops on our hook. It does create a nice large space, so it's just being aware that you don't want to work into that one again. We're going to move down and work into the next one. And again, we're simply crocheting into the top loop of our chain. So we yarn over the hook, insert our hook, bring a loop back through, yarn over and pull through all three loops on our hook. So we've already got two of our stitches completed. What I'm going to do is just in case I get a bit lost as I come back the other way, I'm going to place a stitch marker into my first stitch that I've made because when I come back, it's going to make it really easy so I don't get confused by my chain. Simple as that. And we are going to continue to work down our chain, ignoring that big hole. We're going into that next stitch and just placing a half treble crochet all the way down into each of our chains. Joys of Tangled Yarn. So simply place a half treble or half double crochet into each chain all the way down. As you can see, it's kind of creating quite a nice loose fabric, which is exactly what we want, because this uh, ribbed beanie can be worn either as a slouched beanie, beanie, a slouched beanie, or with a folded brim. It's entirely up to the wearer as to how they want to wear it. So keep working all the way down and I'll meet you once you've placed all your half trebles or half doubles into each of these chains along.
Okay, so I'm approaching one of my, my last stitch is now. So I'm just going to place that last stitch in next to my slip knot that I um, created originally. And then we have, can't even see it, it's that long, our, <laughs> our completed first row. So to turn our work, we're going to do a turning chain of just one. So you just literally put the yarn over the hook and pull through. And then we turn our work. I always turn my work like a page in a book. Just the way I learned. For me, it gives a nicer edge. So let's have a look to see where we are. So we have the yarn on our hook, which does not count as anything. We have the chain one that we've just made. And then we have our first stitch. I would recommend... If you want to, well, I'd recommend actually giving a quick count to make sure you have got a total of 36 half treble crochets. So you can just count your Vs and make sure that you've got 36 of those um, before proceeding into row two. Because for row two, we're going to start working into the back loop of the stitch only. So from here, let's have a little look at the construction of this stitch. The joy of working with a loose stitch, you can see it more. So you have your stitch, which is made up of a front loop, which is closest to you, and a back loop, which is furthest away. And we are simply going to work into that back loop only. So ignoring our chain one, we're going to yarn over the hook, and just insert our hook almost down the middle of our stitch. That way, and pushing it back, it just picks up that back loop there. We're going to yarn over bring our loop up so we've got those three loops on our hook yarn over and pull through all three loops on our hook so let's do that again together so the next stitch you can see you've got your front loop closest to you your back loop furthest away if we aim the hook for the middle of the stitch from the top just picks up that back loop we're going to yarn over bring that loop up yarn over and pull through all three loops on our hook so push towards the back of the stitch to pick up the back loop, yarn over, bring that loop up, yarn over and pull through all three loops. So that means we've completed three stitches on this row. And again, I'm just going to place another stitch marker into that first stitch that I made. So one, two, three, just so I know exactly where the end of my row is. You don't have to do it, it is optional. But it just means that you won't miss that last stitch and you'll create a triangle instead of a rectangle. So we're going to, for row two, we are going to continue to place a half treble crochet into the back loop of each stitch across. So again, we should end this um, row two with a total of 36 half treble or half double crochets. So just keep working all the way down and I'll meet you back at your other stitch marker. So as we're approaching the last few stitches, you'll see that we've got that stitch marker there. And that indicates that last stitch that we need to do. There is always the risk that we think we have to do another stitch because there's another lump there. And that is literally just the chain one from the original row that we did. So to avoid any confusion, I would recommend a stitch marker. So you can remove your stitch marker and again we're just going to work into that back loop of the last stitch. Just insert your hook and complete oops, your last half treble crochet because already it looks like we've extended over the stitch but that's perfectly fine. So that is the end of row two. Moving into row three we simply yarn over and chain one, turn our work and exactly the same as row two, we are simply going to work into the back loop of our stitch, placing a half treble crochet into each stitch around. So I'm going to do my first two stitches and I'm just going to place my stitch marker back into that first stitch. These are not my favourite stitch markers, I'm not going to lie. 
just so I know exactly where I'm working when I come back the other way. So we are simply going to work all the way along, placing a half treble crochet into the back loop of each stitch across. And we should always have 36 stitches at the end of each row because we are placing a stitch into each stitch across. So there should be no increasing or decreasing as we move through this pattern, okay? So I'm gonna meet you at the other end of this row and then you'll be on your own for a little while. So once again, I've reached my stitch marker, so I can clearly see where I'm going to be placing my last stitch. I'm just going to remove that stitch marker and working into that last stitch. There we go. So that's the end of row three already. And you can actually already start to see how this ribbing is formed. So by only working in the back loop, you leave a loop behind, which creates a rib. So we're already on row three. So it's worth noting how each row looks because it will make life easy when you're trying to count them. Of course, you could just do a little tally or something like that. So we are going to continue to repeat what was row two all the way to the total width of our, our head effectively because this is the length of the hat because we're going to have a little, about a two inch brim that we're going to fold up. So that will be all the way up in the middle of the crown. This will be your brim, which tends to be a little bit smaller for children's hats. And we're going to complete a total of, I'll just check my notes, we're going to do a total of 30 rows, okay? So we've already done three, so we're going to do another 27 rows exactly the same, simply by doing a chain one at each end, and then in each back loop of each stitch, placing a half treble crochet. So carry on into row four, complete up to row 30, all exactly the same, and I will meet you back ready for us to complete our fabulous beanie. Because once you reach uh, row 30, you are pretty much done. So I will see you in a few moments. Okay, so I have completed all 30 rows. Um, and I can tell that I'm on an even number of a row because my tail end is at the opposite end as my hook. So just to double check as to how we count our rows... I'm sure you figured this out by now, but you've got one row here and two rows there. So I count mine in twos. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, two, four, six, eight, and 30. So that is a total of 30 rows. So what we're gonna do is after our final stitch of row 30, we're just gonna chain one. We're just gonna flop it over because we're going to use a slip stitch to bring the two edges together. So do a chain one, and then we're going to insert our hook into the first stitch of the first row. So remember we used one loop of the chain, or well, this is the other side of the chain that we're gonna slip stitch into. So chain one, and insert the hook, bring the, keep the yarn on the outside, and we're simply going to just yarn over pull through and pull through the loop on our hook. We're then going to work into the same stitch again. So we're going to, you'll see that you're going to go from this side and join to that side. So insert the hook into the first stitch and we're going to go back into that first stitch we've just slip stitched into already. So just literally bring the hook back through with that loop on, back through the second stitch and then through again. And that gives you a nice neat join that no one will see okay so you can then see you've got your next stitch here and we're literally going to go into not the one we've worked into the next side of that chain so pop the hook through the stitch through both loops of the remaining chain pull through both of those and then through the loop on your hook so find the next stitch and the next part of the chain that's not been worked into, you can just see that there. 
pop through there as well, yarn over, pull through, pull through, and pull through the loop on your hook. And we're going to do that all the way down and you should end up with no unworked stitches. If for some reason you get to the end and you've got more stitches on one side than the other and you know you finished with the right number of stitches, which for the adult beanie hat would have been 36, then you may have inadvertently worked through the same stitch twice or um, so you just need to undo your seam because this is us seaming this stitch, to, uh, this hat together. But it will give you a really, really neat seam. See how easy it is to miss one? Um, give you a really neat seam that you won't be able to see from the outside of the hat. So keep working all the way down, making sure you get all of those stitches. You can see which one you've worked through because you can just see it coming out the back of it. You want to have a little sneak peek of how good this seam looks. It's barely visible from the, the right side. So this is now the wrong side. We're not going to turn it until we're finished. So just keep working through each of these. And I'll meet you at the end. Okay, so we are reaching our final stitch. It might look like there isn't another one, but just, it is just there. I'm gonna pop my hook through there and through that last one there. So the working yarn, just go through, go through. Do a chain one just to secure it. And this is when I should have grabbed some scissors. So what we're going to do is we are going to need a little bit of a length left because we're going to use this tail to secure the actual hat. That's how dead those scissors are. So just probably need, what's that about? 12, 13 inches. And literally once you've done your chain one, just use your hook to pull that through and pull on there to tighten. And there is your tube. So you've got a big tube at the moment. This is the bottom of your hat here. And we have two ends here. So with the longer tail, turn it that way, you're gonna grab your darning needle just not the camera sorry grab your darning needle and pop your longer tail onto your needle okay because what we're going to do is we're going to weave in and out of these rows to cinch the hat together so simply that's where we started so we're going to go into that stitch and then in there and you're aiming to go quite close to the top of your um, top of your rows as close as high as you can because we want to cre create as minimal bunching as possible but you're simply just weaving in and out of these and then just pulling through so just weave in and out in and out just into the top of these rows here until you're all the way back to where you started. Should have done this right-handed, sorry. Doesn't matter which direction you go around. I'm not gonna, <laughs> don't need to worry about that. I'm just doing it what would be considered the wrong way because I am actually left-handed. Okay, we're gonna keep going, we're nearly there. As you can see where we started because you've got your original um, tail yarn. So when we're back to where the tail is, I'm going to pull that all the way through. Just flop this upside down so you can see. Um, and with your 
long tail you just pull. Now I'm going to make sure that everything's kind of towards the top of the hat so it doesn't get lost and you just keep pulling and pulling and pulling till it's nice and tight. Now we're going to make use of this. I don't agree with knots in crochet but there are times when we need things to be really secure and this most definitely is one of them. So what we're going to do is simply tie a knot to help close this hole. So we don't pull too tightly because your wall may snap. So just gently do a knot. I'm going to do another knot here going the other way and you'll find that there may still be a little hole there. That's fine. Kind of angling so that all your stitches are up towards the top. We're just going to weave through the top of these stitches here just through all of these, back to that original starting point, and back where that this yarn is here again, just all the way round to there, push all the way through, and then this last time that we pull is going to finish and close that hole. So once again, just going to tie a knot quite firmly without stretching the yarn too much that it snaps. Okay. So that is all secured and all tied. So we need to weave those ends in, but should we have a little sneaky peek at our completed ribbed beanie? There we go. One ribbed beanie. And you can put a bobble onto there. I like to put a lovely fur pom-pom onto these to really finish them off. And there we have it. And as I said, if you want to work on any other different sizes, so for different age groups, or uh, maybe you want to uh, make it for a gift for somebody and you need a different head size, just click the link in the description box. It will take you through to my blog post where all of those are listed for you. And if you really want, there's actually a printable PDF as well. that You can go on to Etsy or Ravelry and purchase. So you've got that always to hand. Finally, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you never miss out on any of my free patterns or crochet tutorials again. Thank you so much for joining me. I look forward to hearing from you soon.